And after leaving there, I thought, okay, where's my polar plunge? And I said, hey, let's first stop over at Weddell Seals over at Enterprise Island. So I thought, sure, I can do that. And the ice sculptures here were amazing. Each island has different icebergs and glaciers because of the winds and the global water passages. But at this point, I was really beginning to think that I had waited long enough for my polar plunge. And that's when they decided to take me to mainland Antarctica, which really is the penultimate reason for going, isn't it? So while there, I actually went camping one night, which was freezingly miserable. <laughs> but you know, if you're actually there, docked at Paradise Harbor on mainland Antarctica, you think, well, the least you can do is actually sleep on Antarctica, even though your sleeping bag is a little too small and you shiver for warmth all night. And as we were sitting there, an avalanche actually fell 150 yards away at 2.20 in the morning, dumping more ice into the ocean, but not quite enough ice to block our escape. Once I warm up, I think, okay, this has to be my time to take the polar plunge. But that's when the captain of our ship decided to angle the boat over toward the first humpback whales of the season. <sighs> all right, this is great for these people, but they're all trying to keep showing me one cool thing after another to distract me from my truly near the Arctic, the edge of the actual pole, an actual polar plunge. And they say, hey, why don't we go to Danco Island first, where you can see more Gen 2 penguins and all jumping into the ocean. And I think, Wait, wait a minute, I should be jumping into the ocean. <laughs> but, but first, okay, good old Dr. Danco, Danco Harbor, and they say, just go up that mountain and you can see the penguins. So I take my first step in a coat and rubber pants and boots over three more layers of clothes, and in my second step, I fall three feet into the snow. <laughs> I worked to get out of this three-foot hole that I made in my second step, and I take three steps again after digging myself out, then 40 more times with every step as I was trying to get up this mountain. And I said, no, that's it. I'm stopping. I am not fighting this mountain just to see more penguins. So instead, I waddled over toward the shoreline of the Southern Ocean where I could see, sit there and just wait for penguins to come to me. And come they did. And so I sat there for hours photographing over all these Gen 2 penguins, one after another, diving into the ocean. <sighs> okay, this is great, but I can't take it anymore. I've waited long enough. It is my turn. And so they finally relented and we docked so that I could get ready for doing something I thought I would never do but this is something I was going to ever do when I was actually up north. But this was different, kind of like camping here, something that was absolutely miserable, but it was something I had to do. So, because the water could be too cold and shock my system, they strapped me to a harness. Then I waited. When it was finally my turn, one of the crewmates for a photo acted like they were pushing me in, which they didn't, of course. But then again, once I got in, it was finally into that frigid cold water. All I could think was that, surprisingly, it didn't feel cold at all. But I know that my, it's my body tricking my mind when I submerge myself into some temperature that's so ludicrous. So then I just opened my eyes in the salt water and looked up to where I could see the light again. I always thought that the polar plunge was this senseless act and way too over the top. But when I'm at the end of the earth, I'll gladly wait to do something that insane. That was the only thing I could ever do. Thank you. and sparkly last Christmas. And it's also a pen that was done for a Wham! song for a video years ago. They re-released it, and so he bought this for me. And because there's just been a movie about this song last Christmas, I thought, we will try to sing it for you. <laughs> this is Reverse the Big, George Michael and Wham! This is Last Christmas. Just a little bit. Sorry, I didn't make it. 
off. See, Mike, see how he raised the stand? He didn't. Here, here, raise the stand there. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right, continuing the night, give it up for Janet and John. And coming up next, we have John and Janet. Hey, technically, they can't do that. <laughs> Not safe. Where are you standing? I'm just where you were before. I'm just doing back on Mrs. Johnson. I didn't know you were left handed. Yes. How about that? The best people I have, too. So am I. So am I. But um, an industrial accident forced really? me to play guitar right oh, here. Oh, wow. Ah. Literally broke my hand in half. Whoa. All right. This poem is, this poem is called, It Wasn't My Intent. I'm sorry. It wasn't my intent. It was hanging in there on my shirt. You know, right at the top of my shoulder where the sleeve attaches to the rest of the shirt. I know, I know, I should have known better. Mother always told me not to pull on these strings. That I should cut these strings because pulling on them could be bad. You see, I was busy answering prayers and I kept seeing it there in a corner of my eye. It was so annoying. So, I reached up with my left hand and pulled. I'm sorry, it wasn't my intent. I pulled on a string and unraveled the fabric of space-time. At first, I didn't realize what was happening. Everything fell out of place, almost right, but not quite. You know that feeling, like a dream, or rather, like a hallucination. I pulled on a string and unraveled the fabric of space-time. There was an immense brightness like the one created so many years ago when I created this universe. It was only then when I realized what I had done. I pulled on a string and unraveled the fabric of space-time. Now I sit here alone with my thoughts. I should have listened to my mother. I should have cut that string with some scissors. She always said that a string could be recycled into another universe once I collected enough of it. I pulled on a string and unraveled the fabric of space-time. I pulled on a string and unraveled the fabric of space-time. I pulled on a string and unraveled, and unraveled, alone, without even walls to close in on me. Was something that I wrote in the middle of a migraine, and this is another uh, migraine-inspired piece from many, many years ago. Um, I think Janet and I did it here years ago, two years ago. She sang. This is the first time I'm singing it here in front of people.
need a better way See what I've been through.